Hi, I'm Sadie Todd from the University of Missouri, Department of Biological Sciences, and I'm here with my poster, Going Underground, Arabidopsis Roots Track Blue Soil Light Gradients. <laughs> I'm with the Galen Lab, Candace Galen and Emmanuel Liscom are my co-authors. And I'm really excited to be here at BSA. I've been having a great time. <laughs> so let me just tell you a little bit about my research. We were looking at photomorphogenesis, which a lot of you may be familiar with. It's the way that plants track light above and below ground. So all of you are familiar with a sunflower turning towards the sun, or plants turning their leaves towards the light. And it's the same principle underground, except kind of in the reverse, because in the soil, roots need to go towards the darker rather than the lighter part of the soil, as dark soil is richer in nutrients and heavier in water content than dry soil. <clears throat> so we set up a pretty simple little experiment where we had Arabidopsis thaliana, which is a model organism, plant, plants planted in this setup. We had five genotypes, a wild type control, a phototropin 1 knockout, meaning that Phototropin 1 gene had been erased from the function, and phototropins are part of are the genes that work to control movement towards or against light. We also had a phototropin 2 knockout and two hyperphototrophic lines. Our setup looks like this. We have them set up in little boxes and then planted the plants down the middle. This blue thing in the middle is a watering tube delivering um, water straight to the bottom so that there's no effect of watering. And on either side of all of the genotypes per each replicate, we put either a wet filter or a dry filter. And these consisted of soil either completely saturated or soil that was completely dried out. And the soil had before been filtered, so it was of the same consistency. And what this did is it filtered the light that got through to the roots. Although the plants were not affected by the soil differences, wet or dry, because they couldn't get through the plastic to the soil, there was a difference in the amount of light that got through. So you can see in this graph, the black represents the dry soil, and the gray represents the wet soil filters. And as you can see, there's less light coming through on the wet soil filter, meaning that the wet soil is actually stopping more light than the dry soil is. Once the plants had bolted or um, put out their fruits, we were able to take off the soil filters and through the clear plastic we could see the roots and how they had formed. We then used clear plastic over the uh, clear box and we were able to trace the roots as you see here. After that was done we could use an image, imaging program, ImageJ, to measure the length of the roots on either side of the box, whether it was going towards the dry filter or the wet filter. We also excavated the plants and were able to do the same thing with the root mass of the main roots and whatever else we could salvage. And when we analyzed the data, the only genotype that stood out from the amount of roots that was either on the wet or the dry side was the phototropin 1 knockout plant. That one actually had a more random distribution of roots whereas the other genotypes had more roots on the wet side as opposed to the dry side, meaning that they were able to sense the amount of light that was getting through from the dry side and avoid that. Now our results show that phototropin 2 doesn't really have an effect on the distribution of roots. Phototropin 2 does have some other functions, including water use efficiency in the leaves, and it also responds to higher levels of light than we were getting through either of the soil filters. However, phototropin 1 clearly has important roles in control of root growth, inhibiting root growth towards the dry, and therefore allowing roots to go towards the wet, more nutrient-rich, and um, better soil for the plant. Thank you.